Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the um, Boardwalk Talks program brought to you by the Alabama Aquarium at the Dauphin Island Sea Lab. Um, my name is Mendel Graber. I am one of the educators here at the Sea Lab, and this is Joanne Moody. Joanne is um, an educator with our Discovery Hall programs, and today we are celebrating National Estuaries Week with a talk about the Mobile Bay Estuary, um, which we are sitting beside. And uh, um, we'll kind of focus uh, on one part of the Mobile Bay Estuary System, which is the salt marsh, um, this grassy area that is uh, just here at the fringe of the bay and Dauphin Island and um, we will also take a closer look at some of the animals that have just recently been collected from the marsh not this one here um, but one a little little west of us on dolphin island so with that i am going to let joanne um, give you an introduction to estuaries wonderful thanks mendel um, like she said i work with discovery hall programs which is our k through 12 education and outreach program and so uh, I get the the benefit of spending a lot of time out in our estuary and in that habitat the salt marsh that Mendel mentioned um, and so that's why I was so glad that she asked me to come and help celebrate National Estuaries Week. Uh, there is nothing like taking a child uh, into the salt marsh uh, and getting muddy and collecting animals for the first time. And so since you guys didn't wear your marsh gear uh, like I have on, I went ahead and collected things for you guys to, to be able to see today. Um, so I, I do want to focus on a few different things. Like Mendel said, we'll kind of focus in on the marsh uh, a good bit because that's where the, the animals uh, came from that we have to show you today. Um, but we want to talk about what an estuary is we want to talk about all this water, where it comes from, what's in it, those sorts of things. We're going to talk about babies um, in our estuary. And we're talking about what things people are doing, uh, groups of people are doing to help protect places like salt marshes and oyster reefs that are so, so important in our estuary. So let's kick it off with just what does that word estuary mean? What is an estuary? Who knows it? I actually saw somebody out here pointing and, and talking about the water and maybe where it comes from. Does anybody know? So estuaries are these phenomenal places where fresh water and salt water meet. So we probably know where the salt water is coming from, right? Where is the salt water coming from? The ocean. And now we may have some watching uh, online here that would disagree with you. Uh, we all casually call it the ocean, but what is the specific name of that big salty body of water out there? Gulf of Mexico, absolutely. So I use those terms interchangeably, but some people are a little bit persnickety about ocean versus gulf. So lots of salt water out there though in our gulf. And what brings that salt water into our bay? It happened the tide, right? So the high tide pushes that water in and the low tide is going to drain that water a little bit back out. So then where's the fresh water coming from? Rivers. And do you think we have a lot of rivers here in we Alabama? So they don't that's, blow away. Oh, that's right. Uh, I was just going to grab this one. Do we have a lot of rivers or not a lot of rivers in Alabama? A lot of rivers. Now, are we all from Alabama here? No. Where are you guys from? Georgia, okay. We can talk about water later uh, with Georgia folks. Who else? Where else are you guys? Pennsylvania. Ooh, uh, that's that's pretty far away. What about the rest of you guys? Ohio. Ohio. Oh my goodness, we have people from all over. That's awesome. What about you guys? Local? Local. Okay. Well, so all that water is coming down from across Alabama, even though. I wanted to be out here because it's too beautiful, but of course it had to be windy, but it's still, it's beautiful. So Alabama, a little bit of Mississippi, a little bit of Georgia, but now do you guys live in that green area? No. no. What part of Georgia do you live in? 
north okay so probably not in in this green area um, but all of that water in that green area is draining right here into Mobile Bay so that's what we call a watershed and you guys in Georgia live in a watershed and in Pennsylvania and Ohio do you guys know what watershed you live in like when it rains at your house do you know where that water goes the Ohio River for you, right? And then where does that Ohio River flow? And to the Mississippi, and then ultimately, they're all ending up in some ocean, right? So watersheds are what feed our estuary. So all of that fresh water that's coming down. So our estuary is Mobile Bay here. And Mobile Bay is pretty unique in that it's incredibly shallow only about 10 feet deep on average. So I don't know if while you guys have been here visiting, uh, if you've seen any large ships coming and going, but those large ships are not coming through 10 feet of water. So does anybody know what we've done to alter Mobile Bay to allow those ships? Yes, so we call that dredging, right? Where we've dug out the bay to make it deeper so our channel, uh, the, the Mobile Bay Ship Channel that runs all the way up to downtown is 45 feet deep. They're actually in the process of deepening that channel. Uh, so again, a lot of the bay is maybe four, six feet deep, uh, 12 feet in spots maybe, but on average only about 10 feet of water. Now if you look out at the color of our water, how would you describe that water there? Gray, brownish green, right? So nobody said clear, <laughs> right? Uh, so we do not have clear waters uh, in Mobile Bay. What makes it that brownish, greenish, grayish color? Yeah? The same mixed up with the water? So sediment, more generally. Um, and so that sediment, talked about those rivers coming across the land uh, and bringing us that water. Well, as that water is coming down, it's picking up sediment as it moves along and brings it to Mobile Bay here. But that sediment um, with that and with that water coming across the land there, it's also bringing something that we can't see, nutrients. So if you think about at home, uh, I don't know how many of you garden, right? Whether it's flowers or things that you eat, but if you want those plants at home to grow, what might you add to their soil to help them grow? Fertilizer. fertilizer, right? So we have those same nutrients that occur in those fertilizers naturally occurring on the land, and they get picked up and brought down with the water, with the rivers, and come into our bay. Now all of those nutrients are what drives the life in our bay, because our bay is full of life. Uh, and the food source for a lot of that life is plankton. So even if your only reference to plankton is the little green guy on SpongeBob, uh, he's a type of animal plankton. But what do you think those animal plankton eat? That thing we call algae, which is the plant plankton out there in the water. So those nutrients are helping to fuel all of that phytoplankton, the plant plankton, the algae. Um, and that's feeding the animal plankton and a lot of these animals that I have here today. One of the things that you're gonna see, I've got a tub from the marsh uh, and you cannot see in that water, but it was all of these critters that I pulled out of the water. So even if you looked at our water, you know, you may not realize that it was full of life, but there's one clue that I'm looking at right now, and that this lady is here to look at all the birds, right? Would the birds be here if there wasn't so much life or food in the water, right? So that's always a signal to me. Seeing birds around, they wouldn't be here if there wasn't food in the water for them to eat. But one of my favorite things to do is to kayak around the bay and in our salt marshes. And again, even on the, the muddiest, murkiest days, that water as you're paddling will kind of boil, right? With all of the fish and crabs and shrimp and things that are, are swimming away from you. So one thing that we haven't mentioned yet is 
that bay right there with all that food a lot of the animals that are living in our bay are babies right so an estuary is a super critical place uh, that serves as a nursery habitat a place for babies so there's lots of food out there for them what else might a baby need that they're getting from our bay and the habitats around the bay anybody else you guys know what do babies need no do they need a, a safe place to rest and you know yeah right there a home right a, a hidey home uh, especially and so again the marsh uh, and some of these other habitats around the bay provide those hiding places for those babies and now do you think there's a lot of big predators out there in that shallow bay there are some right like the great blue herons that stalk the edge Mendel have you seen the great blue heron that hides under the little thing over there by the oh Maybe we'll uh, go out on the other little point and see if he's there. We have a great blue heron that loves to stalk this little marsh here looking for fish and crabs and shrimp. And then he has a little shady spot that he goes and, and ducks under over there. Um, but certainly fewer predators than out in deeper, more open water. So that bay right there is providing that place for a lot of our babies. Now, some of those babies are going to grow up and be things that we want to eat. So, ooh, I don't want to tap my microphone. Uh, can you name me an animal that grows up in our bay out there that you like to eat? You guys said you like to eat seafood. What kind of seafood do you like to eat? You like to eat shrimp? <laughs> Guess what? We wouldn't have shrimp if it wasn't for our estuary, if it wasn't for Mobile Bay. What do you like to eat? Fish. Fish. Lots of different what we would call fin fish or swimming fish uh, out there because of the estuary. Yes? Sushi. Sushi. <laughs> uh, you prefer your Did, seafood? So you got, you uh, got fish rolled up in with there seaweed. And yeah. Algae. Algae. And and, and, yes. Oysters. Oysters. Just so happens I've got some clumps of oysters here to show you guys. Um, and, and oysters are a wonderful example. Uh, of an iconic estuarine, we would call it, a, a species that lives in the estuary. And you guys maybe have heard the term brackish, right? So that is that term referring to a mix of salty and fresh water. And that's where oysters thrive. And the, the most amazing thing about oysters isn't that they taste so good, it's that they provide a home, a space, uh, for lots and lots, hundreds actually, of different species of animals. Everything from uh, nearly microscopic bryozoans and worms and little bitty crabs on up to the fish maybe that you like to eat like speckled trout and red drum, things like that. So they actually create this whole little ecosystem themselves, those oysters do. They're, they're a phenomenal thing. Yes. <laughs> they are. Um, I was going to call your attention to yes. the grass out here. Yes. So you guys look at the grass at the water's edge. And if you look over there on the far side of this little um, tide pool, you can see mud right at the edge of the grass. Yeah. So salt marsh is this grassy ecosystem that is between uh, high tide and low tide in the intertidal zone. And so couple things I'd like you to notice about it. The grass is what we call emergent. It, it sticks up out of the water, even in high tide. And also notice how dense that grass is. So when that tide floods into that grassy area and you've got shallow water and really dense grass, what do you think about that as habitat as a place for animals to live. What kinds of animals would live in that kind of grassy habitat? Crabs? Crabs? Yes. But even more generally speaking, like what is it that they would have in common? The kinds of animals that are going to live in there? Crabs, fish, shrimp, and there are other kinds of animals? They do? They're small. They've got to be small. So in order to 
go in among those densely packed grasses in that shallow water. It's the small animals that can, can swim in there or crawl in there and live in that uh, grass. And that provides shelter for them from the bigger animals that, um, you know, that will not be able to pursue them into that dense grass. So it's a really good hiding place for small animals. Some of them stay small their whole lives and may live in that marsh grass their whole lives, but others live in the marsh grass when they're babies and then they will leave that habitat and maybe go out into the, the wider, deeper estuary system and then maybe um, when they get bigger, they might leave the estuary and go out into the Gulf of Mexico. So that is one place where these babies are really well supported. Their survival is really well supported here. And then they may move off out into the Gulf of Mexico. And we say that estuaries feed the seas because so much um, food, whether that's their food, um, they live their whole lives in the estuary system and then they maybe get eaten by something that then moves out into the Gulf or um, or whether they themselves move out into the Gulf, they, they do become part of the uh, food chain. And so, you know, the estuary that has all those rivers flowing into it, carrying all that nutrients that feeds the algae at the bottom of the food chain here, that food is like translated up the food chain. So this is a very abundant, um, it's very rich with life. So Absolutely. now we're going to show you some of the, yeah. the life that you can find in a salt marsh. Well, and so Mendel mentioned even just the grasses and actually anchoring themselves amongst the roots of the grasses are these mussels, uh, right? So we mentioned oysters, which are a bivalve, an animal with two shells, uh, and the mussels are other big bivalves. So they grow in clusters like this. Um, I hate that. 
female to female to get a good bit larger. Uh, female is about yeah. that big. The uh, males are yeah. quite big. Yeah. So they, but they are found exclusively in marshes. So they're not going to eat turtles. Uh, you know, they do have claws on their feet. But the webbing, because they're um, really fully aquatic, the only time they're coming to water the land is the river age um, of water.
uh, Ship and Shore carried them, but uh, I'm not sure. I did want a, you guys to see up close a cluster of oysters. Um, and so none of these are alive, but they were fairly recently alive. Uh, and you'll see that, that they are growing in that cluster together. So like we were mentioning, uh, this is how they grow. But it's because they start out uh, as babies as plankton. They're drifting around in the water. And when they settle, when they sink to the bottom, they're actually looking for oysters to attach themselves to. That's their preferred surface to attach to. Um, so growing in this cluster like this, you know, all the little nurks and crannies, all the surfaces. So you see some dead barnacles there. Um, but again, that would make, you know, a lot of living spaces for, for animals. That together that way. Yeah, yeah, just like this. I like to describe a small clump of oysters like this as kind of like an apartment building. Yeah. <laughs> so it has, you know, a lot of animals that live on and among um, and even kind of burrowed into the oyster shells. And then when you get a lot of oyster shells, oysters that attach to each other, it's kind of like a city. So we might refer to that as an oyster reef. So they're very important economically and they're also very ecologically important here. <laughs> Again, I'm being recorded. So do we know what this crab is? Not a ghost crab, but it is one that we find, you know, more up on the land than, uh, than like the blue crabs. But this one comes and goes uh, in that intertidal habitat. This one is a fiddler crab, and it's the, yeah, the males that give them that name. So they have one enormous claw, uh, and then one small claw. And so when he's eating, he actually looks like he's playing a fiddle or a violin. Uh, so there's a, a large male fiddler crab with that big showy claw. And it, it's so, showy for a reason. Uh, do we know why they have a big... To attract females. To attract females. You got it. Absolutely for, for attracting a mate. So the, the males don't use the big claw to feed. So mm -hmm. they will shovel food into their mouths with their smaller claw and it looks like they're playing a fiddle. So that's how they get the name fiddler crab. Yeah. And they're, they're all bark, no bite kind of thing. Uh, Do you guys like to hold it? Sure. So oh. I like to describe crabs as either hiders or fighters. I think a lot of people think of crabs as being kind of pugnacious. Like that blue crab I showed you how to hold very carefully so that it, it couldn't reach you to pinch yeah. you because they are pretty strong for pinching. But um, this is a pretty large male. They don't get a whole lot larger than this. No. And the claw, you can see you know it's got some muscle in there but as you guys noted that muscle is more for waving than for pinching so notice I'm, I'm not holding this in any particular way to try to avoid those claws it just wouldn't be a very effective defense for it to pinch so instead it, it might try to run and hide yeah so if you guys would like to hold it yep, I just always recommend the, the two cup hand your, yeah cup you your know, hands cup. around it because it, it might just run right out of your hand and <laughs> that's the worst it will do is run off your hand mm -hmm. yeah sure <laughs> she's like epic and I was like watch your siblings heads <laughs> <laughs> it likes Mendel <laughs> say I'm safe sure. with this one yeah, if you make them feel safe, they'll kind of yeah. like hunker down instead of trying to run and hide. And again, they're different from that blue crab because they don't uh, have those back paddles adapted for swimming. They're We have some smaller ones in here if you guys want um, to. But not swimmers. So yeah. these are also little fiddler crabs. You see it's trying to run. It likes you, Lorelai. I think it does. It's just like... I would. I would. I did I caught it. I caught it. Good job. Good job. You want to hold it? Yep, just kind of curl it around it. I think it likes that. So you're not moving. I kind of like you. Yeah. As soon as it got on me, it started running. Sometimes we think they can sense, you know, like your attitude and your, yeah, if you're afraid or if you're calm. Yeah. You guys want to take a closer look? Looks pretty cool. Check you out. Get you a good picture.
Going that way? Yeah. <laughs> They're very tickly. Oh, it's very tickly. It, <laughs> unfortunately, I, I don't want to move the camera, but there are dolphins just right on the other side yeah. of the marsh. Certainly a species that lives in our estuary. Uh, they, they could definitely tolerate the brackish water of the bay. Uh, we have a lot of bottlenose dolphins here and in they, Mobile uh, Bay. And they like the abundant seafood here. For sure. For sure. Oh, they're right there. And that one was a young one. Uh, they definitely utilize it as a, a, you know, calving area, have babies here in the safety of the bay and an abundance of food. There's several of them out there. All right. We've got a lot of folks here today. It's good. Busy day at the aquarium. Do we want to share anything else? Did you bring some snails? There, I showed the, the kids held the snails. Yep, we talked about that. Common misconception about where shells come from. Mostly snails, clams, oysters, mussels. Um, sand dollars you'll find on the beach, but uh, shells come from mollusks, not from hermit crabs. You wanna That's a big one. Grab the um, clump of mussels and we'll, we'll show the, yeah. the anybody watching the stream a little closer. Uh, so this was a, a cluster that got knocked off the marsh. So occasionally when we have a storm uh, increase in energy, it's going to break off a, a clump of grass like this. Um, and so that's why, why I was able to, I wouldn't pull this from the marsh. Uh, but these mussels uh, in the marsh, they're great food for uh, the abundance of raccoons that we have down here, unfortunately, but also for blue crabs. Blue crabs love to, to munch on these mussels. Uh, but also, we were just talking about snails. There are predatory snails that we have here. Uh, the whelks and, and um, the oyster drills, they will actually eat these mussels. But they're great filter feeders, so uh, the mussels and the oysters are helping filter uh, that water and making the water clearer and cleaner, if you will, um, for the other animals. And again, there is a little, I don't know if you can see, the little squareback crab running around on there. Um, oh, and there's another one. There's a little baby one as well. Um, so a lot of life hiding out amongst that muscle clump. Well, Joanne, thanks for, for yes. joining us and chatting estuary. I'm so glad I could share. So, so glad. Oh. Thanks for joining us for National Estuaries Day. And we hope to see you for our next boardwalk talk.